Shabbat Shalom boys and girls. I'm Miss Megan and this is Azariah and we are going to be your host for Sabbath school today. We're so glad. He's excited too. We're so glad that you guys are here with us today and we have some fun for you. If you joined us last week, you saw that Moshe and Aaron are in the desert with all the Israelites. So let's see. I know. That's pretty wild, right? They came out of Egypt. And here they are. But don't spoil our story. Shh, don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. So we are going to see what they are up to now in our story. Yes, we're going to turn it over to Miss Bethany for a song and some prayer. And we'll see you guys back here very soon. Shema Israel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad, Baruch Shem Kevod, Malhuto, Leolam Shabbat Shalom, everybody. I'm so excited to be with you guys again this week. Father, we just pray that today would be a day of um, rest and of fun and family and studying your word more and growing closer to you. May we never forget how many amazing things that you've done for us and how you always provide and that you've given us your son, Yeshua. And we are just so forever grateful. And we pray that um, today would just be a day to spend with you and spend um, knowing you more. And we pray this in Yeshua's name. I mean, we got kind of a little fun song today about manna. <laughs> Shalom, boys.
boys and girls. Hi there, this is Susie. I'm so glad to be here. I've missed trained up in Torah very much and I'm thankful Miss Kaylee asked me to be back on for this scripture story. I think this story really shows us that Yah provides for our needs, even when we're stiff-necked. Philippians 2 reminds us to do everything without grumbling or arguing, and this story is a great reminder of how much our Father loves us and will take care of our needs. Let's begin. Israel travelled on from Elim and the whole community of the people of Israel arrived at the Seen Desert between Elim and Sinai on the 15th day of the second month after leaving the land of Egypt. There in the desert the whole community of the people of Israel grumbled against Moshe and Aaron. The people of Israel said to them, We wish Yahuwah had used his own hand to kill us off in Egypt. There we used to sit around the pots with the meat boiling, and we had as much food as we wanted. But you have taken us out into this desert to let the whole assembly starve to death. Yah said to Moshe, Here I will cause bread to rain down from heaven for you. The people are to go out and gather a day's ration every day. By this I will test whether they will observe my Torah or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they have brought in, it will turn out to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. Moshe and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, This evening you will realize that it has been Yah who brought you out of Egypt, and in the morning you will see Yah's glory, for he has listened to your complaining against Yah. What are we that you should grumble against us? Moshe added, what I have said will happen when Yahuwah gives you meat to eat this evening and your fill of bread tomorrow morning. Yah has listened to your complaints and grumblings against him. What are we? Your grumblings are not against us, but against Yahuwah. Moshe said to Aaron, Say to the whole community of Israel, Come close into the presence of Yah, for he has heard your grumblings. As Aaron spoke to the whole community of the people of Israel, they looked toward the desert, and there before them the glory of Yahuwah appeared in the cloud. And Yah said to Moshe, I have heard the grumblings of the people of Israel. Say to them, At dusk you will be eating meat, and in the morning you will have your fill of bread. Then you will realize that I am Yahuwah your God. That evening, quails came up and covered the camp, while in the morning there was a layer of dew all around the camp. When the dew had evaporated, there on the surface of the desert was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they asked each other, Manu, what is it? Because they didn't know what it was. Moshe answered them, It is the bread which Yah has given you to eat. Here is what Yahuwah has ordered. Each man is to gather according to his appetite. Each is to take an omer, per person, for everyone in his tent. The people of Israel did this. Some gathered more, some less. But when they put it in an omer measure, whoever had gathered much had no excess, and whoever had gathered little had no shortage. Nevertheless, each person had gathered according to his appetite. Moses told them, no one is to leave any until morning. But they didn't pay attention to Moshe, and some kept the leftovers until morning. It bred worms and became rotten, which made Moshe angry at them. So they gathered it morning after morning, each person according to his appetite. But as the sun grew hot, it melted. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread, two omers per person, and all the community leaders came and reported to Moshe. He told them, This is what Yahuwah has said. Tomorrow is a holy Shabbat for Yahuwah. Bake what you want to bake, boil what you want to boil, and whatever is left over, set aside and keep for the morning. They set it aside till morning, as Moshe had ordered, and it didn't rot or have worms. Moshe said, Today eat that, because today is a Shabbat for Yah. 
Today you won't find it in the field. Gather it six days, but the seventh day is the Shabbat. On that day, there won't be any. However, on the seventh day, some of the people went out to gather and found none. Yahuwah said to Moshe, How long will you refuse to observe my mitzvot and teaching? Look, Yah has given you the Shabbat. This is why he is providing bread for two days on the sixth day. Each of you, stay where you are. No one is to leave his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. The people called the food man. It was like coriander seed, white and it tasted like honey cakes. Moshe said, Here is what Yah has ordered. Let two quarts of manna be kept through all your generations, so that they will be able to see the bread which I have fed you in the desert when I brought you out of Egypt. Moshe said to Aaron, Take a jar, put in two quarts of manna, and set it aside before Yahuwah to be kept through all your generations. Just as Yah ordered Moshe, Aaron set it aside before the testimony to be kept. The people of Israel ate man for 40 years until they came to an inhabited land. They ate man until they arrived at the borders of the land of Canaan. An omer is one tenth of an ifah, which is a bushel dry measure. Shabbat Shalom. This is Eleanor with your nature lesson today. We learned about manna and quail today in our lesson. I will talk about quail. Here are some quail facts. The lifespan of a quail is three to five years. They eat seeds, berries, and insects. That means they are omnivores. Quails usually live alone, but they form flocks in the fall. They can fly a short distance at a time. You will find them in forest areas and woodlands in Central America, Africa, Europe, North America, South America, Asia. Their main threats are raccoons, cats, and predators like snakes. They can be white, blue, black, or brown. Quail eggs are smaller than chicken eggs, and they can grow to be 6 to 12 inches in length. That's all for this week. Shalom. Can you guys believe that Yahweh brings the Israelites out of Egypt. So they see all these plagues being poured on to the Egyptians and he keeps them safe through it all as he promises. And he gets them out of Egypt and they're in the wilderness. And what do they do? They don't listen. <laughs> it is the most frustrating thing ever. Maybe it's because I'm a parent. But I think it's just, I, I just think of how Yahweh must feel with all of us sometimes. We think, man, those Israelites, they did not listen. He said, don't gather any manna on the Sabbath day because this is your Sabbath. And what did they do? They went out to grab the manna, which was a manna. I know. I can't believe it either. And yet, as I'm reading that, I feel so convicted because he's telling on me. Because sometimes, I know, sometimes I am that way too. I forget to put my whole faith and trust in Yahweh that he will provide and that he will say what he's going to do. So, yeah, so maybe we're not so different than the Israelites anyway. But it's still frustrating to read that, right? Well, guys, don't go anywhere yet. We've got some more fun for you. Next, as, as Raya says, shh, next we have Hebrew and history and a moral story to pull all of this together and to learn some more stuff. And yeah, and we're gonna go get a snack. Maybe it'll be manna. Hey, for this week's Hebrew, we're going to do a review from an old lesson. So it has nothing to do with this week, but it's good to have a review. Let's get going. Sadi, Kofen, Re.
Sheen and Tov. Aleph, Bet, and Gimel, Dalit, Hey, and Bob, and Zion, Chet, and Tet, and Yod, and Kaf, Lamit, Mem, Nun, Samit, Ayin, Pei, and Sade, Kof, and Reis, Sin, and Sheen, and Tov. Shalom, Mishpacha. It's your Havara Yohana, or Miss Joanna, here with Bryn to present this week's Hebrew language lesson. Today we will be learning how to say familial words in Hebrew. That means we'll be learning about words that are related to our families and family members. Once again, this week's Bible lesson comes from the book of Genesis. Does anyone remember what the Hebrew name is for this book of Torah? You're correct. It's Bereshit. Now, do you remember what Bereshit means? Write again. It means beginning. You're already doing a great job on this week's Hebrew language lesson. I can tell you've really been practicing saying your Hebrew words over the past week. Today we heard about Cain and Havel, or Cain and Abel, who were the first children and the first brothers, as recorded in Bereshit. Sadly, we also heard about the first murder that occurred in the world. Cain and Havel's story ended tragically, and it shows what can happen when someone behaves wickedly and acts sinfully. But thankfully, not all stories about families turn out this way. Sometimes, as we saw with Cain and Havel, or Cain and Abel, Biological families, those are families that are connected by birth, blood, and DNA, have problems, and members don't always get along. But there is another family that all of those who walk in the way, following Messiah in Torah, are part of, and that is the Mishpacha of Elohim, or the family of Yahweh. After Cain, Cain killed his brother Havel, or Abel, Adam, Adam, and Hava, Eve, had a son named Set, or Seth. Seth was something like the great, 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 great grandfather of Noah, or Noah. After the flood, Noah and his mishpacha, or Noah and his family, were the only people on the earth. So it was through Noah's mishpacha that the earth was repopulated. And it was through the family of Noah's son, Shem, that Yahweh would bring forth his chosen people, Yisrael, a special mishpacha or family that he would call his very own. It was through Shem's lineage or family line that Avraham would be born. In Bereshit 12, Yahweh tells Avraham to leave his own mishpacha or family and that Yahweh would make Avraham and his descendants a great nation and that they would be greatly blessed by Yahweh. Yahweh also tells Avraham that all the mishpachot, all the families of the earth, would be blessed through Avraham and his children. The Mishpacha of Elohim, or the family of Yahweh, continued on through Avraham's son, Yitzhak, or Isaac, then through Yitzhak's son, Yahob, or Jacob, whose name was later changed by Yahweh to Yisrael, or Israel. The family line of Yisrael were called the chosen people of Yahweh. This lineage was carried on through Yehuda or Judah, one of the twelve sons of Yahob or Jacob or Yisrael. And it was through this lineage that King David or King David was born. And it was through the family line of King David that Yeshua HaMashiach was born. In the first chapter of the book of Yohanan or the book of John, the apostle tells us that any who believe in Yeshua any who call on his name have the right to be called children of Yahweh. 
So, any who love Yeshua, who follow him in the way, in Torah, unto Yahweh, become part of the Mishpacha of Elohim, the family of Yahweh. So what then, exactly, do we call the members of our Mishpacha, or family, in Hebrew? Well, a biological family begins with a husband and a wife. In Hebrew, the word husband is the same as the word for man, which we learned when we were talking about Adam and Hava is Ish. If one wants to say, my husband, they say, Ishi. Likewise, the word for wife is the same as the word for woman, which we learned when we were talking about Chava is Isha. And if we want to say, my wife, we say, Ishi. When a husband and wife have children, they become parents. The Hebrew word for parents is Horim. Horim. When the husband and wife become parents, or Horim, the husband becomes a father. And the Hebrew word for father is Av. Av. And when the wife has a baby, she becomes a mother. The Hebrew word for mom is is ima, ima. A male or boy child is called a son, and the word for boy and son are the same in Hebrew, and that word is ben, ben. A female or girl child is called a daughter. The word girl and daughter are also the same in Hebrew, and that word is bat, bat. In Hebrew, the word child is yaled, yaled. And the word for children in Hebrew is yaladim, yaladim. In Hebrew, the word for brother is ach, ach. If we want to say my brother, which can be used as a term of endearment or a way to express a bit more ahava or love, we say achi. Achi. The word for sister in Hebrew is achot, achot. And just like with brother, we can say my sister as a term of endearment or love. And that word is achoti, achoti. Our parents' parents are called our grandparents. The word for grandfather in Hebrew is saba, saba. The Hebrew word for grandmother is zafta, zafta. Our uncles and aunts are our parents' siblings or brothers and sisters and their spouses. In Hebrew, the word uncle is dod, dod. The Hebrew word for aunt is doda, doda. Our cousins are the children of our aunts and uncles. In English, we have one word to describe this relationship to us, and that's cousins. But in Hebrew, there's a distinction between male or boy cousins and female or girl cousins. In Hebrew, a boy cousin is called ben dod, ben dod. And in Hebrew, a girl cousin is called bat doda. It's very common for those who walk in the way to call their chavarim, or friends, achi and achoti, or brother and sister, because we love them as if they were part of our biological family. In the Sefer Mishle, or the Book of Proverbs, it says, There is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. These chavarim, or friends, may not come from our earthly family of origin, but they are part of our family in Yahweh. They are the mishpacha of Elohim. Manis Yahu, Marcus, and Lucas, or Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all three record Yeshua as saying that it is those who do the will of Yahweh whom he considers mishpacha. I pray that each of us will be able to say, just as Yehoshua or Joshua did, Choose this day whom you will serve, 
As for me and my mishpacha, or family, we will serve Yahweh. Until next time, my chavarim, my mishpacha, I say to you, Shalom b'shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Peace to you in the name of Yeshua Messiah. Shabbat Shalom. Miss Jessica here with our history lesson today. Can I ask y'all a question? Has your mom or dad, maybe your grandma, or anyone else that you live with, or maybe you've been visiting before and stayed there for a while, have they ever made such a huge meal that you had to eat those leftovers for what seemed like forever? Maybe it was only a few meals or just a couple days, or maybe it was even a whole week of eating those leftovers. You know, the same food. I have. And guess what? I have even been the one responsible for making my family eat those leftovers for days. It can get a little aggravating sometimes having to eat the same thing over and over and over for days. Well, guess what? Israelites had to eat the same things for a much longer time than just a few days. As we learned today, Abba gave them manna and quail to eat. Now, we don't know if they were able to forage very much food as they traveled from land because scripture doesn't give us a whole lot of detail on that, but even if they were able to forage some in those areas as they traveled, there definitely wouldn't have been enough food found to be able to feed all of the Israelites. So they had to rely on Abba to provide for them. We're going to take a look at a couple of areas or people that relied on a certain food source heavily in history or for long periods of time, if you want to say it that way. Just like the Israelites, as we learned today, had to rely on Abba to provide them with manna and quail. First, we're going to look at the ancient Aztecs and the Mayans diet. Now, they relied heavily on corn. And it was prepared in many different ways. They could grind it up and make it into tortillas. They ate it off the cob, much like we do. They would roast it. Um, it could be cooked into a porridge, used to make tamales, and even they had a corn drink that they would make out of it that was very nutritious. And it was easy for them to store by grinding it up to make cornmeal or even storing it whole. Another area or peoples that we're going to look at is going to be Ireland. Now, Ireland began to rely heavily on potatoes around the 16 to 1700s. Now, potatoes grew very well in this area. And because they grew so well, potatoes quickly became a staple in the everyday diet of the people living there. Now, by 1830, it's thought that most young men, now remember, these would have been the people that were out working all day long, that most young men would have been consuming around five kilograms and for those of us here in America that would be around about 11 pounds of potato per day. That's a lot of potatoes. Well just like Abba provided for the Israelites in the wilderness, he will provide for us. It may not always be exactly what we want. We may not always want to eat leftovers for a week, right? But he will take care of our needs. That's a big difference between our wants and our needs. I'm going to leave us today with a verse from Luke chapter 12, verse 24, and it says, Look at the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which have neither storehouse nor granary, and Elohim feeds them. How much more valuable are you than the birds? Well, that's all for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful Shabbat, and I hope we see you back next week. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. I am so glad to be back here with y'all again. These past few chapters, we've been seeing a lot of complaining, huh? Just three days after witnessing an extraordinary miracle of the parting of the Red Sea, the complaining started again because they had arrived at a place where there was no drinking water. It was bitter. And Yah hears their cries and gives them water. And the complaining continues in chapter 16. But now, it was about not having anything to eat out in the desert. And this is when Yah begins giving them manna in the mornings. 
Imagine waking up to a light frost in the morning only to discover that it was actually edible. Not only was it edible, but it tasted like a pastry prepared with oil. In Numbers chapter 11, verse 7 and 8, it tells us, Now the manna was like coriander seed, and its appearance like the appearance of delium. The people went about and gathered it, ground it on millstones, or beat it in the mortar, and cooked it in a pot, and made cakes of it, and its taste was as the taste of cakes baked with oil. Yum! All I can think about is donuts. What about you? The chapter ends by saying they would eat the manna for the next 40 years. There are two verses I want to point out though. The first one is verse 12, which says, I have heard the grumblings of the children of Israel. Speak to them, saying, Between the evenings you are to eat meat, and in the mornings you are to be satisfied with bread, and you shall know that I am Yahweh your Elohim. What powerful words! And you shall know that I am Yahweh your Elohim. It's as though Yahweh is telling them, Okay, I will feed you, but not just to sustain you physically, but to also show you that I am your Elohim. Let's think about that for a moment. They've seen plenty of Yahweh's miracles, from the ten plagues he sent Mitzrayim, the parting of the Red Sea, the drinking water, and now the manna. Yah is still having to prove to them who he is, that he is their Elohim. The last verse I want to point out is verse 28, which says, And Yahweh said to Moshe, How long shall you refuse to guard my commands and my Torah? Yahweh is clearly saying to the people, how long are you going to keep acting like this? Like a yo-yo in your walk with me. Up and down in your faith. Up and down in your obedience. It sounds like some of us sometimes, doesn't it? Seasons where we're really faithful and obedient. And seasons where we're not. We read our Bible for a week and then we don't pick it up for three weeks. We forget to say grace or pray at night before going to bed because we're busy. Or we simply forget. And we know Yah is patient and gracious towards them and how He keeps blessing them because it's hard to overcome some patterns, just like He does with us. But there is a limit. Yahweh is saying to Moshe and to the people through Moshe that there is a limit. How long are y'all going to keep this up? We learn later on that the people of Israel disobey Yah one too many times. Yah loves us and is patient with us and kind, but there are limits and we never want to walk up to that limit. Maybe today is the day you say no more from this day forward. I am going to be consistent in my walk. That would be a blessing in and of itself now, wouldn't it? Shabbat Shalom, my friends. See you later. Hey, guys. So you know what else I thought about while I was sitting there? watching Sabbath school and thinking about the chapter that we read, I was thinking about how gracious Yahweh is. He had every reason in the world to be angry at the Israelites for not trusting in him and having faith in him that he would provide for them, despite all the ways that he has shown so far that, that he can and he will. <laughs> and he extends that grace to us too and I, I think of how grateful I am for that because there are days when I'm stubborn like that unfortunately and and maybe there are days that you are too and I'm just grateful that his grace covers that and that he loves me and cares for me even in ways that I don't know right away that I need it so well you guys my time with you is done but don't leave just yet. We have another song and, oh, I know, I know. He's ready for his Sabbath now. <laughs> we have another song and um, a craft and ooh, a snack for you. And well, I hope you guys have a blessed rest of your Shabbat, no matter what you guys get out and go do. We'll see you guys next time. Shabbat Shalom. Hey kids and welcome back to Trained Up in Torah. I'm gonna do a song portion for you this week and I'm gonna sing a special song that Mr. Stan wrote, Kaylee's daddy. He wrote the whole song about manna 
and he sent it to me with um, even the chords and music to go with it. And so I learned to play it and I am going to sing it for you guys today. And it's super fun and super catchy. And I really hope that you're able to memorize this song and sing it over and over again. And that it would help you to remember the story forever. Yahweh gave the children some manna, manna. Yahweh gave the children some manna bread. Yahweh gave the children some manna, manna. Yahweh gave the children some manna bread. Yahweh saved the children of Israel, but they weren't taking it very well. He grumbled and cried, complained and wanted Mitzrayim. We did just fine. Give the children some manna, manna, Yahweh. Give the children some manna bread. Yahweh, give the children some manna, manna, Yahweh. Give the children some manna bread. Mitch Rahim were pots of meat and all the bread that you could eat. They said we'd all be better off dead. But Yahweh gave them some manna bread. Yahweh, give the children some manna, manna, Yahweh. Give the children some manna Give the children some manna, manna, Yahweh. Give the children some manna, manna. Yahweh said, I'll rain it down. Gather each day from off the ground. Six day, get enough for two. And I not your body to rest for you. Yahweh, give the children some manna, manna, Yahweh. Give the children some manna bread. Yahweh, give the children some manna, manna, Yahweh. Give the children some manna bread. Up in the morning, out. Forty years they ate their fill. Yahweh did just what he said. Men of fill and they were fed. Yahweh gave the children some men of men. Yahweh gave the children some men of bread. Yahweh gave the children some men of men. Yahweh gave the children some men of bread. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom, everyone. This is Miss Bethany. Our memory verse this week is Matthew 6, 11. Matthew 6, 11 says, Give us today our daily bread. Once they were in the desert, wandering, the children of Israel became hungry and tired and desperately needed Yahweh to provide for them. Yahweh provided manna for the Hebrew people, just as He provides His word for us. When we stay in Yahweh's word daily and follow the Torah, our blessings increase. In Matthew, Yahshua tells us how to pray, and I think it's a great prayer to memorize. Our Father who is in the heavens, let your name be set apart. Let your reign come. Let your desire be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into trial, but deliver us from the wicked one. Because yours is the reign and the power and the esteem forever. Amen. Once again, Matthew 6, 11. Give us today our daily bread. I hope that you have a wonderful week, everyone. Shabbat Shalom, and thank you for joining us. Shabbat Shalom, friends. This is Miss Belina, and today for our craft, we're going to make this cute little quail. For this craft, you will need the printable quail in the description below, some markers and crayons, scissors, a glue stick, and a small feather. I printed my template off in color, but if you can't or don't want to print it off in color, you can print it off in black and white, and then you can color it with your crayons and markers. First, we're going to cut all of our pieces out. I recommend keeping this example photo at the top of your page in front of you as a reference as you go along. Once you have all your pieces cut out, it's time to assemble our quail. First we're going to take the brown strip and glue the ends together white on white. Then taking your blue strip, you're going to glue down the brown loop on the opposite side of that middle flower. Then we're going to glue the ends of the blue strip together just like we did before with the brown. Next we're going to make the head with the black strip, gluing the ends down together as we did before. 
Then we're going to make the beak with the shortest black strip by folding both of those ends in towards the unprinted side. And then we're going to glue the short tab onto the white tab. That'll make a loop that you can form into a beak. Now we're going to glue our beak onto the head of our bird on the opposite side of that flower. Now we're going to put glue just below the beak and then we're going to attach that to the flower on our blue body. Now we're going to make our legs with the two black strips. Fold each side in towards the middle of the printed side. and then glue that long side onto the belly of our bird. Now we're going to take our feather and glue it to the flower on the back of our bird's head. Finally, we're going to glue our mana pieces and our quill to our ground piece. To glue the quail, we're going to put glue on the feet, and then we're going to glue right under the tail. I hope you enjoy this craft, and Shabbat Shalom! Hey kids, this is Miss Galena again with your snack. As I was reading our portion today, I noticed that there were a couple different translations describing manna. Let's look at a couple together. In the King James Version, it says, and the house of Israel called the name thereof manna, and it was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. So this kind of reminded me of Cheerios, or the coriander seed reminded me of the popcorn, but also some other treat ideas are some vanilla wafers, or the layered wafer cookies. The scriptures describes it a little bit differently. It says the house of Israel called the name manna, and it was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like thin cakes made with honey. The first thing I thought of was pancakes. But it also reminded me of graham crackers, or these lattice tea cookies, and oatmeal lace cookies as well. So pick whichever manna snacks you like best, and I hope you enjoy. Shabbat Shalom! Shabbat Shalom, my little Torah friends, and my big Torah friends. It's really nice to have you joining us today on Trained Up in Torah. You know what? It's always nice when Yahweh's people can get together, and we always look forward to seeing one another on uh, Trained Up in Torah every Shabbat. You know, we've had a good visit today. The uh, chapter that we read today, Exodus 16 or Shemot, it's a very interesting story there. You know, the children of Israel had, had just been brought out of Egypt and they'd seen all these miracles that Yahweh was doing and, and, and they got to complain in any way. And, you know, Yahweh took care of them. Yahweh, Yahweh sent them manna to eat. Now, do you know what manna means? It comes from the Hebrew word ma which means what? Mana means, manna, or means, what is it? You know, if, if we'd have been out there, you see, Yahweh didn't name it manna. The children of Israel did. They called it, what is it? We might have called it, whatchamacallit, instead. So they called it, what is it? And, you know, there's no telling what Yahweh might have sent if they hadn't have been grumbling and complaining about how great it was in Mitzrayim, where Yahweh had just rescued them. You know, he, he, he might have rained down pizza and ice cream. Did you ever think of that? Hmm. That would be pretty neat. See, Yahweh is going to give us what we need. And sometimes he blesses us richly, but at the very minimum, he blesses us with our needs. And so these grumblers and complainers, they still got their needs met. Yahweh sent them manna and quail. And he gave them rules for 
how to go out and collect it. And he said, don't, don't save any till the next day. What happened when they did? It bred worms and stank. Okay, so that's another example of how if we do what Yahweh tells us to do, he's going to bless us. Because they said it tasted like, like cakes, thin cakes made with honey. Okay, so that's not too bad. Nevertheless, Yahweh told them to go out and collect it every day and on the sixth day to get enough for two days on that day because they weren't supposed to go out and get any on Shabbat so that they could rest because Yahweh was teaching them about the Shabbat. And so this week as we go out, let's try to remember to count our blessings. Let's, let's forget about the things that we we could grumble about. Let's think about the things that, that we have really got going for us in our lives and thank Yahweh for them. And remember that He loves us and He wants to take care of us. And I'm looking so very forward to being in the kingdom when He brings His kingdom to for His people. So let's, uh, let's just go to the Father right now in prayer as we, we close. Almighty Yahweh, our Father in heaven, Praise be to your name, it is most set apart. We thank you, Father, for all the many blessings that you shower down upon us. You shower blessings down on us like you, like you showered, so to speak, the manna down on the children of Israel. And we just want to count our blessings, Father, as we go about this week. Help us, Father, to, to, to look at the things that you have given us in our lives, our loved ones, even our, our brothers and sisters, sometimes they get on our nerves, but we really love them and we would, we would just be so sad without them. So even when we're having struggles, Father, help us to remember that we love our brothers and sisters. Help us to look at the things that we have. We've got, we've got food for our, for our tummies. We have shelter over our heads. We've got heat for the winter. We've got our, our, our scriptures that we can hold in our hands and that we can, we can read and, and, and go out and share with other people. And Father, we have things like Trained Up in Torah where we can, we can get together on Shabbat and watch it and enjoy it. And we thank you, Father, for all the people that make it possible for us. And Father, one of the, the biggest blessings that I can think of that you ever sent us was Yahshua. And so I want to pray as we go out this week that we would walk after Yahshua's example and follow him in all your ways. That we would serve you and love you with all of our heart, with all of our being, and with all of our might. And that we would love our neighbors as ourselves. That we would, we would focus on the weightier matters of the Torah, the compassion, and the right ruling, and the belief without leaving the other parts undone. And we pray, Father, that you would help us to treat others as we would want to be treated ourselves because Yahshua said, this is the law and the prophets. So help us, Father, to be the kind of people that you want us to be. Obedient children to our parents, obedient children as parents to our Heavenly Father. Help us, Father, as children of Elohim to honor our Father in heaven as well. And we just want to say, Father, we thank you for again for all our all the blessings that you bless us with and we just want to praise you and thank you and give you all honor and esteem and we pray all these things in the name of Yahshua Hamasiach and for your great name's sake hallelujah all right my Torah friends until next time I look forward to seeing you then and meanwhile Shabbat Shalom
scared he was going to hit me. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Oh my goodness, what a yawn. Yeah.